Hello, I'm Dan Anderson. I'm going to talk about how to install and run Avalon, Hyperledger Avalon. Uh, this is not a presentation, it's a live demo. There won't be any PowerPoint, so we'll just um, show how to do it live here. So first I'll go over the prerequisites on, and what you can install it on. Um, then we'll clone the source build the source using Docker and run some examples. And the second part, well, we'll show how to build Avalon without using Docker, which is a lot more involved. So uh, we basically recommend that you build it and run it using Docker. It's a lot easier, um, at least to start with initially. So first, let's Go to the Hyperledger Avalon source in, on GitHub. It's um, github.com slash hyperledger slash Avalon. And you go to the page here and scroll down to building and you click on build document. So we scroll down um, and go to Docker based build and execution. So there's some prerequisites. Um, you need to have uh, a machine, either virtual or real, um, with Ubuntu 18.04 installed on it. Um, the machine could be a virtual machine. I, the example today is going to be a virtual. No, it's not. It's going to be a cloud instance. Um, but I also use VirtualBox heavily and I use cloud. It could be Azure or AWS or any other cloud instance that um, supports Ubuntu 18.04. Now if you want to run with Intel SGX, um, the easiest cloud to use is um, Microsoft Azure. You, or you could also buy your own hardware using Intel NUC which has um, um, Intel SGX on it. Other options are Oracle VirtualBox or uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. Those are virtual machines on your laptop. And those have a disadvantage of not supporting SGX, but they're very good for development. So we won't go over installing Ubuntu, and I won't cover installing um, Docker. That's all under the prerequisites. Um, document. So we click on prerequisites. It tells you how to install Docker CE. Then you also um, download the Docker Compose script. So that's, and that's all explained in this prerequisites document. So moving on, first thing we do is we want to clone the workspace here. So Basically, we're cloning github.com hyperledger Avalon with Git. So what do we, what do we have here? We already well, we just have a lot of source files and documentation. Um, next step is we run docker compose up dash dash build. Um, all this is explained under the build.md document under the source repository, by the way. I copy that. So what we run is docker compose up dash dash build. Now that's going to take about 11 minutes the first time you run it. So I'm not going to bore you and wait 11 minutes. Um, so let's get out of here and we'll have a go to another instance where it's already installed and running installed. So let's run that docker compose up dash dash build.
So after the initial time, um, it only takes a couple minutes to build. Um, you could also skip the build by not omitting a dash dash build parameter, um, unless you make any source file changes. Um, you don't need to do that. But I want to show some of the steps it goes through <clears throat> when you're building. <clears throat> most of the build is compiling the C++ source. Um, most of Avalon is written in C++ and and Python. Of course, the Python doesn't require compiling, but the C++ does. And there's also some Go code and other, a Java and other languages mixed in there, <clears throat> depending on what SDK and API you want to use. Basically, for the, the worker, Avalon worker, you need to use C++ right now, although we're, we plan to add other um, languages and for the client we have Python but you could use other anything that supports um, um, JSON or RPC requests it could be um, Node.js, JavaScript or whatever. So let's watch it build. Okay, built it, and now you saw it's running Avalon now. So let's go back to instructions. So we ran this SDU do Docker Compose up build, and then we see a build success here. Well, I think it's scrolled off. Um, <clears throat> then we want to en enter on another terminal, a bash shell under Docker. So we type sudo docker exec minus it avalon dash shell bash. And that's in the build MD instruction. So you type that and now you're in a shell. After you type your password, of course, there you are. So let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot to say when you when you when you're building Avalon, the, after it finishes building, it runs these tests. So that's what you see here is processing some work orders um, at, that are read from reading some JSON files. So this is kind of an automatic test. Um, and you could see those, those are documented um, under the, the test section here in this document, testing. So it shows you how to run that manually if you want. So um, what we have is Enclave Manager here running, listening to two requests and it just keeps on pouring all those debug outputs saying it's waiting, sleeping and waiting for some requests to come in. So let's send in a couple requests. So let's go to under examples. Let's go to under examples apps, generic underscore client. Generic underscore client is a Python script that is intended to be a client for any worker. And this really enables you to get up and running real quickly. Of course, it's not, it's not pretty and it's not a GUI or it's not a, uh, web buoy it's not pretty but it does um, communicate to any client so we're going to um, connect to one of the um, pre-built workers a, a echo worker which just echoes back what you you type so we go under examples apps generic client and there's instructions on how to um, run it so let's just echo something um, okay, Just, since we're running under Docker, we got to follow this set of instructions where we specify the URL. Usually the URL or UI defaults to the localhost colon 1947. 1947 is the TCP port 
that um, Avalon listens to. It's the Avalon listener listens to 1947. But we have to specify instead of localhost, Avalon listener, which is a Docker host name. So let's type that in. Let's see. Actually, don't type it in. We just copy and paste. Magic. So let's start it. Except you have to change to the generic client directory first. So cd samples apps. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, submitting a work order, got a response, and got a result, except we didn't see any, well, it gives you the result, but it's kind of hard to read there, um, unless you could run um, base64 to um, ASCII by, in your head, and also do um, decryption in your head, which of course you can't. So let's run this again, but add the minus O option. Minus O means, um, let's look at the instructions here. It means decrypt the result, decrypted output, which is what we want. So let's try this again. So it's hard to read all that real quickly. So what happens is, let's see. Scrolling up here. So here we um, invoke the command line here. And it looks up a worker. In this case, it's the echo worker that's looking up. And we get through. It, we get a response saying the worker is located here. Then we submit a request, a work order request to the worker. And that's just that um, hello world message, which we saw up here in the command line or hello message. And everything's encrypted and encoded in base 64. So it doesn't make any sense here. It's just Looks like garbage, but it's base64 and encrypted. Next, we get a response from the uh, worker. So that's good. It says it's computing. Then we get a result. And we get out data. And the data is right here. That's the result. Now I'm encrypted in base64. But because we use minus O parameter, it uh, decrypted it, and here's the result, hello. So let's try some, something else. Let's change it to hello, Dan, my name. And this time we get, it takes a while here. Doo, doo, doo. You can see it, the debug message on the right terminal. That's the the server or the worker running and Enclave Manager, LMDB. But then on the left is the client and we get the result here. Hello, Dan. So that's it. Actually, let's run one, let's run one other example here. Let's see if we can find it. It's a heart disease application. It's under examples apps, heart disease eval. And, but actually we could use a generic client too to talk to that um, application. So let's just try copying and pasting this.
So we're past, we're talking to the listener again, running on Docker and I have on listener report 1947. The work lo worker ID is heart disease of that eval and we're sending in this data here. And I'll explain that data. It's basically various measurements um, for looking for heart disease in somebody. So we run this. Um, okay. Except I did not say the minus O option and it did not decrypt the result. The result, here's the result. But let's get a readable result. Add minus O to it. So, except. No, that's the wrong program there. Okay, got to copy the, mine, the correct command line here. And append minus O to it. Got a response. And the reply from the worker is, you have a 47% risk of heart disease. So, and that's from running all these parameters here, which um, I'll explain in a moment here. Let's go to the heart disease application. So you, it, easier way to do it is just run the GUI. You can just type in these parameters by hand, age, sex, blood pressure, and lots of other measurements, which only medical professionals will understand and will evaluate all this information and predict. Um, what the chances of heart disease. So you could run this yourself. You just need um, um, X, be running X windows. That is probably a Linux console would be the best way of doing it under some virtual machine or, or something. Um, but um, that's just a, another example of another worker. So. So under example apps, we have multiple examples here and there's a ethernet token application. There's in, and there's an inside out demo. That's where you could access some files from outside the, the TEE or the secure enclave. So, but anyway, that concludes this part of, of the um, demo here. We, we installed Avalon and ran a couple examples with it. Now to stop it, you, you could just type control C there on the console. Should, and it will take a few seconds to shut down nice and cleanly. There's also a um, script you could run, TS, TCS underscore startup um, to stop Avalon. So it takes a few seconds. We have the shell there that stopped. That was right here. Then we have the Enclave Manager, um, the, which talks to the, the Enclave, which runs the workers. Then we have the Listener, which listens to requests from clients or from requesters. Um, and the LMDB, that's the data, what database there for Avalon. So that concludes this part. And the next part, I'll talk about how to install and run Avalon standalone, that is without Docker.